Okay, so this lesson we're going to look at just some basic ideas for displacing the groove. Uh, Dave Weckl did this a long time ago, called it playing backwards. There's lots of different ways of, of um, categorising this, if you like, but I think I think about it as taking an existing beat and just moving it or starting it at a different place. So what we're going to do is take just a really straight-ahead rock beat and to begin with, we're just going to play the kick and snare in places that they're not normally played. So if we have our bar of eighth notes, one and two and three and four and normally if we just play a straight ahead rock beat, we've got the kick on the numbers, if you like, one, two, three and four. A really good place to start with this displacing is to just put your kicks and snares on the ends. So you're going to get one. I'll just show you that with the loop so you can get a feel for it. The thing about the displacement, the power of it, is that the ear is drawn to the kick and snare as being the gateposts of where the pulse is. We're so used to hearing kick and snare stating the pulse that you can really trick the listener's ear into thinking that the whole song's shifted or create tension and then come back home with a straight ahead groove. So here's some eighth note displacements. So all I'm going to do is just move the kick and snare around from the numbers, if you like, to the ends, okay? So. The next level of that is to imply more than just the downbeats with the kick and snare. You know, because if you add some other kick drums, it really starts to feel like there's another groove happening away from the loop. So something like almost even the We Will Rock You beat, if you like. If you start that on the end, and what you might need to do initially is to write it out on paper, and actually, why don't I give that to you, um, where you can see where the kicks and snares are falling relative to your regular pulse. But this is what it would sound like if we play that groove first with the loop, and then I'm gonna move it later by one eighth note. So even though it feels like the groove's moving around, I'm still just thinking in terms of that 4-4 pulse. Level two is to move the 16th notes or the inner triplets. It's a, because they're swung, this is, is quite difficult for this one. So what that means is we're gonna take the whole rock beat and start it on the second 16th note, right? So what I might do is just slow this loop down a little bit so you can hear it and I'll, I'll count the second 16th note for you. Okay, so if you got one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two three. Two, three, four. 
Okay. Sounds pretty wild. The other place you can put it is on the last 16th note. So again, I'll count it for you. So you get one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E Okay. Now up to speed. It's the kind of thing you don't exactly want to do too much. But if you pepper it in with the displacements of the eighth notes and what we did in the first lesson where we're just locking down with the groove and then playing off the groove, you get something like this. Lots of options. Okay, in the next lesson, what we're gonna look at is brain melting level, I suppose, where we're gonna superimpose grooves in a completely different subdivisional rate over the top of this. It gets wild, your mum doesn't like how it sounds, but it's gonna be awesome.